Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Now today I'm going to be showing you how to make kind of a simple bangle bracelet with a theme from my past. Taxis. Anyway, it's something I've wanted to do for a long time and I thought it would be a perfect class just to teach you a little bit about making bangle bracelets with polymer clay and uh, for instance how you find a form that you like or a form that fits your hand. So let's get started. Now when you're making bangle bracelets like this of course you need a form to make them on. Now this one I know I made on this cutter and cutters are perfect you know if you're just going to make a rather thin bangle just take your cutter set slide your hand through and then you'll know which one fits okay all right don't use the plastic ones you have to use the metal ones so that's fine if you're going to make a rather narrow bracelet so what do you do if you're going to make a, a wider band well uh, for a long time i used uh, cardboard forms and those are like what comes when you get tape like rolls of tape well, sometimes they're the perfect diameter, but most often they're, I found them too large. So what I did, also there's one thing about this, the cardboard. You use it a few times and it does start to degrade. The heat from the oven and the curing will actually start to damage the cardboard because that cardboard probably has glue in it too. So um, it, it's better to find something that's more permanent and more stable than that. Okay. Metal is quite stable, but I don't know. I was never able to find a cutter that tall that would actually fit my hand. I went to food, you know, gourmet shops and things, and sometimes they have these very nice tall metal forms because they put food in there and then they pull it out and you're left with this cylinder of something to eat. But, you know, they tended to be either smaller or too large, so they weren't working. So what I did was I went to my refrigerator. I took, I took my cutter, and I went to my refrigerator, and I compared the cutter to a whole bunch of bottles. Now, this is Mazetta, Mazetta made with Napa Valley wine, and what it was was pesto. And I had it in there, and I kind of forgot about it. So I threw away the contents, but I have this nice this nice bottle. And it's straight-sided, and there's no lip or rim, so I'll be able to put clay on here and just slide it off. You see, if there was any, let's say this was flat, and then it, it, it sort of flared out at the bottom, that's a real problem. It's got to be completely flat so you can slide it off one end or the other, or in this case, both. Glass is perfect because this glass really isn't going to change, okay? And it's nice and smooth, unlike this, it has this. You see where they actually uh, welded the steel together, but glass is completely uninterrupted. So find something like that. I mean, take this to the grocery store and start comparing bottles to this. And if it's the same size, if it's just a little bit bigger, you're far closer to what you want than you would otherwise be, all right? So now that we know how to find a good form, uh, and, and it can be quite inexpensive too, you know, use the contents, keep the bottle. Um, we are ready to start making our bangle bracelet. All right, so this is a polka dot bracelet. Obviously, you see the dots, and the way the dots were made uh, was by rolling a, a sheet of white clay and then using a cutter to make the dots, which is obvious, and it is the best way to deal with this particular uh, look that you want, and you will end up with perfect polka dots, all right? Perfect. Space them out perfectly. But I want to tell you what I did first, because I've worked with clay a very long time, a long time. And when I made this bracelet, which was a number of years ago, but I had still worked with clay a very long time. 
I wanted to make a perfect polka dot bracelet, so you know what I did? I made a bullseye cane. Yeah, that's right. White with a thin black wrap. And for some reason, my brain told me that that was the way to make a perfect polka dot bracelet. Well, obviously, if you've worked with clay at all, you know what happened. I cut slices. The slices squished a little bit. They were never perfectly round. In addition to that, they were never exactly the same thickness. So what I made was basically a mess. And I remember the moment when it hit me that what I had done was I had turned something quite simple into a very difficult, taxing, frustrating experience. So that I just offer to you as a little bit of a lesson that it doesn't matter how long you've worked with polymer clay, maybe how long you've worked in any medium that you think you've mastered. Sometimes you can still make dumb mistakes and we all do it. So don't beat yourself up if it happens to you. Now we're going to start on our actual bracelet. I'm not going to do this because I, I think it's a little simple and you can do it. I am instead going to make something I've wanted to make for quite a while. I made this hat. I went through this whole sewing thing and it's a little beret. And the color theme may be very familiar to some of you if you're about my age and maybe you lived in a big city because for instance, in Chicago, all the taxi cabs, they were checker cars. Checker is like Ford, Chevy, whatever. It's a manufacturer, but they were all yellow and they had black and white checks and they were so distinctive. All the taxis looked like that. They were wonderful. They were great, big, roomy taxis. But, um, you know, I mean, I remember them from my youth and I liked them very much. And forever, I see yellow and black and white. I think of checker taxi cabs. So I wanted to make a bracelet using these colors and that's what we're gonna do. Just like an old taxi cab. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we have to cover the glass with our deli paper. Now, this is just deli paper I got at Costco, and I cut it in half, and then I cut the half in half, and now I have this nice strip. Now, I did put a piece of scotch tape on the end, and I'm going to wrap it. Now, this is important. I mean, I could put the, cl the clay directly on the glass, but what will happen is, you know, clay shrinks uh, less than 1%, but it does shrink. And if you wrap it around something like this glass and you wrap it very, very tight, what will happen is it will be so hard to get off. You're not going to believe it. It'll be so hard for you to get off. You may even have to cut it off. So, of course, the paper is helpful because I can slide the paper more easily off the glass than I could the clay, which I couldn't slide off at all. All right, so now we're ready to start putting clay on. So let me prepare that and I'll be back. Now for this particular bottle and size, I'm going to put the liner on first. Now remember when I tried this on and I slid through and my hand slides through fine this way. It was a little difficult getting it back through, but what that tells me is if I start by wrapping this outer layer, the decorative layer, and then later, after it's cured, add the liner, that it's going to get smaller. This opening gets smaller, right? So a case like this, it, uh, I would start with the liner and then build from there so that the opening doesn't get any smaller than it already is. Now the bottle is approximately the same size. Maybe it's just a touch larger, but I don't think it's gonna hurt if it's even just a bit larger than that. So I am going to start by wrapping the liner around first. 
Now, this liner, I'm just going to make red. Now, this is up to you. Some people would say, ooh, it's got to be violet, or ooh, it's got to be blue. For me, this kind of thing is always red. It's just always red. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, I've cut a strip that is two inches wide. I choose my ruler, and I cut it two inches wide. And then I cut, made a nice, clean cut here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bevel the edge slightly, just a little bit, like so. And now I'm going to wrap it around. Now I haven't textured it. I could texture it, but I decided not to do that. And this is this has been rolled through setting number three, which is a medium setting. Um, the finished bracelet is probably going to be about this thick. It's not going to be terribly thin. Now I could probably make it thinner, make this a lot thinner, uh, and then actually have a much thinner bracelet. But you know, when you're making things like bracelets that you're wearing that are in direct contact with your flesh and your warmth, it's probably a better idea to make them a little bit on the thicker side rather than the thin. Because if it gets too hot, we know what happens, don't we? Okay, so let me cut this back just a little bit. Oh, I cut it the wrong way. It was supposed to be cut this way. Oh, well, let me see if I can actually do it. Or if I have to do it again. It wouldn't be a tragedy, but... Okay, so I think that's going to be fine. I may have to clean up the interior just a little bit because, of course, I can't see the join inside. I can't really see whether it's a really good join or not. So there is a chance that I will have to do some correction later. So I'm just going to cut, cut this away a bit like so, because I can tell it's not totally flat. And I want it to be totally flat. Now after this is cured, I will sand it totally smooth so that the next layer that I put on which will be the decorative layer, the checkerboard layer, so that that layer has a nice smooth foundation, nothing lumpy. All right, so now this will be cured in the oven. I'm going to put it in a cold oven and I'm going to leave it there for 30 minutes. Now I'm just stroking that join a bit. And I'll straighten this edge just by pushing it back up just a tad. But this will all be very easy sanding, okay? So in it goes. Now it's time to make our uh, checkerboard. Now I've got two sheets, white and black. They've both been rolled through setting number three on my atlas that starts at zero. And this one, they're both a little larger than two inches, I would say. Yes, and I cut a clean edge on each one of them. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna be actually working on this piece. Um, yeah, I do switch them out, but working with black and white is quite 
challenging. First of all, everything you have has to be clean. Your hands need to be clean. Everything needs to be clean. And because, um, of course, if you get any black on there, you're going to see it. See? Right there, I got a little bit on the edge. Let me move this over just a tad. And it's important to work on paper. So just remember to work on paper. Because the less you handle this clay, the better. Now, this side of my ruler, and I think I've talked to, to you guys about this before, so you probably know, I sand one side. I sand the wrong side of the ruler so that it doesn't stick to the clay. My white clay is quite soft, as is my black clay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make half inch, a half inch checkerboard. So I've lined up my half inch mark with the white sheet, the cut edge, and now I'm going to carefully cut as carefully as I can, cut away like so. Now I'm going to move the white clay over to the top flap of my paper. I'm going to take the black sheet, lift it up, and turn it over, and then push it right up against that cut like so. All right now I will remove my ruler best I can. Best I can. I had another thought, something that might have made it actually much easier. And maybe I should have just cut the two sheets in half. But I think this will work next time. I think I'm going to just try cutting the white in half and then the, the black in half and then work from the center out. I think that would have been a bit easier. All right, now I'm just going to take the paper and I'm just gonna rub along that seam. Because hopefully, I mean, I don't want them to split. I don't want to rub all the way up here though because I'm gonna have to lift that black sheet. So I'm just concentrating my effort along the seam. Okay. All right, so maybe I'll just use the paper, help me out a bit. Now position that half inch mark along the seam. And then cut like so, just like that. Now let's see if I can lightly lift it up. I might have to give this one another good sanding on the back. Okay, so let me lift up the black, move it, then pick up the white and place the sharp edge against the black. like so. Okay, I'm going to take this black and I'll put it up there so I don't lean my elbow in it or ruin it some other way. Now let me rub the join. Okay, now let's take the ruler and put the half inch mark right there 
on the join, the separation between the black and the white. And now I'm just going to cut along the top edge of the ruler. Lift it. And you know what? By leaving that paper there, I was able to lift it a lot easier. Now I'm going to take the black again, and I'm going to press it right there against that white strip, like so. Now I can lift my paper again, put it on top of that join, and rub along the seam. And finally, let's make that last cut. I've positioned the half inch mark along the separation between the black and the white. And I'm gonna cut straight across. Oops. Okay, very good. So now we have black and white stripes. So this is the first part of making our checkerboard. All right, so these I'm going to move. We don't need these anymore. And now I think I'm gonna do what I thought would <laughs> have made my life easier. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it now. But first I'm going to just rub each of the seams, because I really don't want these to separate. So let's get the paper off. The paper. Get the paper off again. This time we're going to start in the middle. This is what I said I should have done last time. I think it will be a little easier. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to use this paper. I'm going to let the paper help me out here because remember, my clay is rather soft. First thing I'm going to do is clean up the end. You see? So I've taken this three inch mark, aligned it with the white. And now I can cut. You can separate this so you keep your clean black and white. All right. Now let's move this down. But you see, I've got to work off that end, don't I? So let me turn this around. Turn this around. I've got the paper. That paper isn't doing much for me now, but I think it will. that. Now let's lift this carefully. Pull it off. Turn it around and put it back together again. And as I'm working, I'm kind of stretching where necessary to make sure that these corners are good. In other words, that the pattern is good at the corners, so not off at all. Huh. 
I'll get it. Okay, so let's cut again. Here we go. So every time you can see I'm aligning to the last cut. I have to lift one side. I might as well lift th this short side, I think. You know, by the end of this process, I'll have it all worked out. Okay, if you insist, I'll do it the other way. I can do it. What seemed to be the easy way turned out not to be. We will get there one way or the other. Okay, let's give it a little bit. You know what that does make sense, doesn't it? I mean, I've been rubbing on this side, which means I've been pushing the clay against the paper. Durr. and slide it back into place. Okay. So together we did end up with the best way of working, didn't we? Okay, half inch. Cut. Pick up the one that I haven't been sticking to the paper. Flip it over. Put it back into place. Lay the strip down. Move the paper up. Okay, so <laughs> now that we've got that done, let me finish up. You don't have to watch me do the whole thing. You've already seen me work through the problem. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up. All right, so uh, the red clay is cured. I put uh, liquid clay on it. Of course, you have to do that because I'm going to be putting my raw clay checkerboard and the yellow on the surface. This is a very simple pattern. Um, you know, it is. It's, it's quite a simple pattern. I thought about making it more complex, but I think I'm going to stick with my Texicab theme um, and go on. All right, so yellow. Now this yellow that I've made is yellow and white. White on the back, yellow on top. It's been rolled through setting three on my machine, so it's the same thickness. Now I started with uh, yellow through three and then I put white on the back and then I rolled it again through three, okay? I'm gonna show you something. Now, this is a little hard to see because the yellow is quite thick. So the influence of the red is not as prominent. But as I am looking at these through my eyes, this one is slightly darker and, um, you know, I want it to be bright. So what the white is doing here is it is acting as a buffer between the red and the yellow and it maintains the brightness of the yellow itself. Okay, I don't know if you can see it that much. It isn't, it's not a huge difference in this case, but it's something for you to remember in the future. Let's say you have 
yellow that is quite thin and you are backing it with red, then you're gonna want that white in between to act as that buffer and protect the yellow from the influence of the red or whatever darker color is underneath. Okay, so let's start. Now I have loosened this off of the paper. I'm gonna take a clean cut. We'll start with a clean cut first. Okay. All right. I'm gonna lift this. And I did also do a lot of burnishing. So that's why all these little squares are not uh, coming apart. And if I'd wanted it to be all checked, I would have had to make this sheet a bit longer, but it wasn't critical to me. I knew that however the pattern didn't line up, I was just going to insert yellow. So here we go. Maybe I'll make it just a bit wider. Cut away. That much. And now I want this to be straight because I'm going to insert the yellow in the space. Okay. And I did cut the yellow two inches wide. And I can just butt it right up there against that black. Sometimes just the fitting part, you know, making things so they fit perfectly can be Kind of the difficult, the most difficult part of making things look as perfect as you possibly can. Put a little bit of a curve in the sheet. Now smooth join. Now I've tried to be as careful as I can with the white and still I have little black dots. White is very hard to work with. Well, okay, I will say this, it's hard for me to work with. Now 
Now, in another uh, tutorial, somebody asked why I use a brass rod so much as opposed to uh, an acrylic rod. Well, uh, I don't really exactly <laughs> know. I mean, I just happen to have these, I but I really like them. It's the right size, nice and smooth. Um, and of course, when you're using an implement, a smoothing implement, this diameter is small. I, I can see what's happening. Sometimes you use an acrylic rod and the fact that you see through it kind of interferes with uh, seeing what you're actually doing. All right, so as you go around, just inspect the whole thing. Okay, so I decided that I wasn't going to texture this, that I'm going to sand it. And I think that I can eliminate some of these black spots just by sanding. And, and setting three is pretty substantial, so I'm not going to sand all the way down to the red by any means. But I, I think I can have a nice looking bracelet sanded. Um, in this case. Now, let me tell you, if I had a lot of problems with black, if I had been very sloppy in my work and I had done a lot of, well, this isn't even bad. I can sand, I can sand this off. Then I probably would have textured. So a lot of the things that I do are not decisions I make before I start. Rather, they are decisions made because of what I am producing. And sometimes the best, the way to get to the best possible end piece is sanding. Sometimes it's not. So you will make these judgments along the way. Rarely do I plan anything out from start to finish. I just go and um, Although this may be quite a plain bracelet, it is what I wanted. I wanted to make something that reminded me of checker taxi cabs, and that's what I have made. All right, now I'm just going to take my blade, and I'm just gliding it along the cured cuff underneath to remove any excess clay. Now you can always sand, which is what of course I do to, I would say probably 99% of the pieces I make, but you can make your life easier if you eliminate some of what you would have to sand away before you cure it. Yeah, of course you can sand, you can sand for days. But that's not something I really, really wanna do. Okay. All right, this goes back in the oven and then I will be back. All right, so this is cool, or cold, actually. It's still on the bottle. I haven't removed it yet. And um, I think I may make this actually shiny. In which case, I don't start with Aubrinet. This very, very coarse stuff. I'm going to start with, oh, Micro Mesh 1500. And while it's on the bottle, I like to just, and I did this in water with just a drop of soap, but give it that initial sanding. Because, you know, even when it's cured, if I take this off the bottle and I start sanding and sanding and sanding it, uh, I may actually misshape. It may become misshapen. So, while it's on the bottle, I wanted to get some of this off and just inspect the condition of it and make sure that it is possible for me to get a good sheen 
on, uh, on the bracelet. And most of all, I wanted to make sure that it's really smooth. And you know, as I'm running my fingers across the checkerboard, I can feel, feel the separations. I can feel some of the seams. So it's kind of questionable right now what I'm going to do as a finish. But I decided that, you know, um, if I'm going to try to make the surface high gloss, that I cannot use that coarse grit opera net. Ultimately, I may, but at this point, no, there's still some question as to how I'm going to finish. Okay, so I hope that was clear. So let me take this off the bottle. Just going to push it off. And the paper is wet under there, so it's sticking a bit more than it ordinarily does. But I will just keep pushing the bottle out. So you see, it's not that easy for me to get it off, even with the paper. And it would be far more difficult if I didn't have the paper wrapped around. Okay, so let's get that off inspect the inside and what I'll do is I have to of course do edging look at that that doesn't look very good does it looks much much better if you have something that's cleaner that looks intentional and this definitely doesn't look intentional so I think I'll probably just put black around both edges okay now important at this point, I will use the Aubra Net. Let me use 120. I could use 80 as well. But what I want is I want to make these surfaces totally smooth. got a tad more to do. Turn it over. Repeat on the other side. And that's looking really good. All right, now we're ready for the edging. So let me prepare that and I will be right back. Before moving on to the actual edging, I've sanded it, but uh, before I do that, I want to inspect the opening here. Now, right here, I think you can see that. That's where the uh, the two ends overlapped. And you can see that it isn't perfect. I could backfill, add a little bit of clay there, and that would improve that. Now, this is where the tape was. Remember the tape from, from the paper that I wrapped around the bottle? Now, what I do is I just take my Aubra net and first just completely sand the opening just by putting the paper in there and then rotating the cuff around, okay, like so. Now I'm going to wipe it out. And uh, I can backfill. So let me take, first of all, this dust is not a good idea. So if you have that, get rid of it. Set the paper aside. Oops, I just put my finger in my liquid clay. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid right there. 
like so, see, shiny. And let us take just a bit of red clay and just push it down there, right down there. Now, if necessary, you're gonna want to uh, actually soften it. I didn't soften mine, I think it'll be okay. And I'm just pushing it and working it right in that space that I've got to fill. Okay, so I'll just pull it over. Let me grab a little bit more. Push it over. And you probably need a little sculpture tool. Just really push it down in there. Like so. Of course, if I'm backfilling like this, after the next curing, I will sand it. I think it's pretty clear what I'm doing here. Fill the space and then take a little sculpture tool and pull it over, remove any excess that doesn't need to be there. And we will sand it. We will sand it later. Now, I don't know if you can see what I've done like that. You can see the rest of that clay down there. I have to work it from the other side, like so. All right, so I will continue doing that. And then we will actually put our edging on. Okay, let me finish. All right, I've rolled a sheet of black clay. This has been rolled through setting number three on my atlas. I applied poly paste along the edge and, you know, I used a liquid clay around the outside to secure this and now I'm using poly paste. Now, the liquid clay is less expensive than the poly paste. If I had used poly paste to secure this sheet, oh my goodness, I would have used probably the whole bottle. So um, that is basically why I use the liquid. Now I use the poly paste here because I had used very coarse grit abranet, really scuffed up the surface, right? Even though it wasn't the coarsest abranet, it still really scratched up the surface, you can see. So I think that the poly paste is a better choice in a situation like this. All right, so now I'm just going to put it on the sheet and the sheet is on deli paper and now let me just trim away some of that excess like so okay and now I'm going to take a scalpel. I have scalpels all over. Of course, at this very moment, I can't find one. I found one. And now I'm just going to take and cut away the center. All right. I didn't cut it exactly. I'm going to have to do a bit of trimming and take it, pick it up. Now I'm going to use my scalpel. You can use a craft knife. And I'm cutting the excess away. OK, 
Okay, and that looks good inside. Now, let's cut away the outside. Then if you can, and you find spots like this, just try to get rid of them. Now I will be sanding this whole side again, probably several times. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. It's not perfect, but it doesn't look too bad. Now, if you find you're having a little trouble with it, because look, that's pretty darn thin. Um, try cutting the outside first and then the inside. And you might find that easier. Because, of course, this edge inside probably doesn't have to be as perfect as the one outside. And if you find you really don't like it, then really just start again. It's not worth, at some point, sometimes it's not worth struggling. Struggle, 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 and it doesn't get better. You just make things worse. All right, so let me do the other side, and then we're going to put this in the oven again. All right, I did both sides. Now, it occurs to me that some of you may find this a little bit of a difficult task. Um, and so you can, of course, do one side, cure it, even just partially cure it, then do the other side, then cure it. Uh, entirely. So then you don't have to worry about disturbing one side as you work on the other. Okay. This is quite thin. This is quite thin. So this may be a challenge for, um, maybe a challenge for you to do this, but just be patient, work slowly, and don't get frustrated. It'll be okay. All right. This is going in the oven. Oh, right. So what I've been doing is sanding, wet sanding, my little bracelet. You can see I have soapy water. It's just, uh, you know, water with a few drops of dish soap. And I have this little spongy thing. This came with the uh, micro mesh set. And I've worked it all the way down to 6,000. And the way this happens is so simple. You just sand the surface, and then you sand 
the lip here. Like so. It's not difficult. It can be held in winter when your skin is very dry though. So make sure you put a lot of lotion on because having your hands on soapy water like this is pretty hard on your skin. Okay, so let me tell you what I sanded through. First, I started with 1500 grit. Then I moved to 1800. Then I went to 2400. Then I went to 3200. Then I went to 3600. Then I went to 4000. Then I went to 6000. And this is micro mesh. Here's the ratty box. Micro mesh. Okay, so the other uh, sanding material that I use a lot is uh, the Abranet. This stuff. The Merca Abranet. This is very coarse. So if you want to create a surface that's good for shiny or a nice matte sheen, then you know what? You're not going to use the opera net. Any kind of sheen, and you've got to use micro mesh or regular wet dry sandpaper. All right, so let me rinse this off, and then I'm just going to buff it up on my clothes, and I'll be back. All right, so I buffed this up lightly on uh, an old napkin, but uh, I want you to look. You can see how imperfect this is. This is really not what I want. Remember what I said, if you're going to make something very shiny, it's got to be perfect, and this is so far from perfect. I would have to go back and re-sand through all the grits, and it would take me a long time. So now I have to decide, is that what I want? Is it worth it? Is that what I'm going to do? No, I don't really feel like doing that. And um, so I'm not going to, not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sand it with the Abranet. And I'm going to make it as smooth and as perfect as possible. Then I'm going to hit it with my um, Nivea cream. And then I'll have that super black matte finish in the black areas and the white will be matte and this will be super matte too. But at least the surface will be really smooth and not, see, it's, it's up and down, up and down. You can see because you can watch the highlight, right? That is not what I want. I'm changing it. I'll be back. Okay, peeps. Well, here's the bracelet. It's done. And you know what? I like it much better. I, I do. It feels good. It feels very smooth. Before, it didn't feel so smooth. And you know, because the surface isn't really shiny, even if the surface wasn't perfectly smooth, you wouldn't really see the imperfections. Like the other one. That was a mistake. Anyway, what I ended up doing was sanding with this P180, not the P80. Here's the P80. I used P180. You can't see the numbers. Anyway, because I had sanded it before, it, it just seemed like I didn't need to use the coarsest brunette grit. Then I put my Nivea cream on, and that kind of eliminated any of the, the fine scratches. It's not perfect, but it is what I wanted. I wanted a Chicago taxi bracelet. And that's what this reminds me of. So that is done. Now, I do have a little tip for you. Talk to me by a Chinese lady trying to sell me a very expensive jade bracelet. If you find that you've made your bracelet a bit too small and you're wondering how in the world am I going to get it on my hand, Try this by taking a plastic grocery bag, putting it over your hand, and then pushing your hand through, like so. Then you just simply remove the bag. Now when you want to take the bracelet off, put the bag back on, pull it back through the bracelet, and then pull through. You know, the slickness of the bag will help to push your hand through, so give that a go. Now. I hope you've learned something. I hope you didn't, you enjoyed our time together. 
and that if you liked it and learned something that you'll like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Uh, I do read your comments. I don't often get to them because I'm trying to do as many classes as I can, but I would really like you to know that I do appreciate your comments. I appreciate your kind words. They mean a lot to me. I mean, teachers, we do what we do and it's, it's really nice to know when what we teach is appreciated. So I very much appreciate it. So until we meet again, this is a taxi bracelet. This is the polka dot. I think you know how to do this. And it's time for me to say goodbye.